I would be willing to bet you have a to-do list, whether it's on a sticky note in your planner or just floating around your brain somewhere. Lists are good, lists are good, lists are good. Today, I'm gonna share with you my favorite way to organize to-do lists, which is Google Tasks. I'm gonna walk you through how to use it and share some of my best tips and tricks. Let's start with the basics. Google Tasks is a free Google app that allows you to create lists and add tasks to each list. It's connected to your Google account so you can access it on multiple devices. And it's also connected to your Google Calendar. So any tasks that have a specific date and time attached to them can be viewed on your Google Calendar. There are two main ways to access Google Tasks through the side panel and through the app. Let's start with how to access Google Tasks through the side panel. First of all, make sure you are logged into your Google account and you can actually access this side panel from any of the main Google apps. So Gmail, Google Drive, Google Calendar, Google Slides, Google Docs, or Google Sheets. I'm gonna be using Google Drive in order to demonstrate this and I'm actually on my shared Google account with my husband, so my Google Drive is very empty. But down in the bottom right corner, you will see this little arrow that says show side panel. When you click it, that side panel will pop out. You will notice I have icons for Google Calendar, Google Keep, and then also Google Tasks. Underneath there is a plus sign that will allow you to add more apps through the Google Marketplace. In order to access tasks, I'm just gonna click the circle icon with the blue check mark and it's gonna welcome me to tasks. I'm just gonna click the blue get started button and it's going to open up my tasks. Now let's talk about how to use the Google Tasks side panel and I'm gonna break this down into the lists and the tasks. Let's start with the lists. In order to create a new list, I'm gonna click the drop down where it says my tasks and I'm gonna select create new list. I'm going to give it a name. So let's say this is my weekly to-do list and I'm going to click done. I can also edit an existing list. I'm gonna click the drop down and select the list I want to edit. So for example, my tasks. Now I'm gonna come over to the three dots and I'm going to select rename list. Let's say this is going to be my power list, which is my list of just three to do's for each day. And I'm going to click done. I can also switch between lists at any time using that drop down, so I can go back to my weekly to do list. And I also can reorder the lists. I'm going to click the drop down again, but this time I'm going to click and drag in order to put the list in the order I want. Now let's talk about the tasks. I can add a task to a list by first selecting the list I want to add it to using that drop down. Then I'm gonna click where it says add a task. I'm gonna give this task a title. So let's say check email. Then I can go in and add details if I want. So maybe I need to give a little bit more information about this task. I also can assign it a specific date and time. We're actually gonna come back to this a little bit later on. Once you are done putting in all the correct information, you can just click anywhere there is blank space in Google Tasks and it will save that task. You can edit an existing task just by clicking where that text is. It will reopen that edit window and you can go in and change the details or the date and time. I'm gonna add another task just so you can see what it looks like when I have more than one. So again, I'm gonna click add a task and let's say grade papers. Now that I have more than one task, you can reorder them just like you can with your list by clicking and dragging. So I'm just gonna hover over, click, and then a blue line will appear to show me where that is going to be dropped. So at any time I can just click and drag in order to reorder those items. You also can create subtasks. This is a great way to break down larger to-do list items into more manageable chunks. In order to add a subtask, you're gonna hover over the item click the three dots on the side and choose add a subtask. This is going to indent it down below. Let's say I need to grade math quiz and social studies assignment. Now you cannot create subtasks underneath of each of those. You're limited to just the main task and subtasks. But at any time, if I want to unindent it or bring it back to my regular tasks, I can just hover over the item, click the three dots and choose unindent. As I complete these items, I can check them off and they will move to my completed tasks list. 
I'm gonna go ahead and check next to social studies assignment. It has now marked it as completed. You'll notice the message down at the bottom and I now have a completed section. I can click on the arrow in order to show or hide that completed section. Just to show you an example, I'm going to also check off math quiz. And now I'm gonna come down and show my completed list. At any time, I can delete individual tasks from here by hovering over and clicking the trash can next to it, or I can actually delete all of my completed lists by coming up to the three dots and choosing delete all completed tasks. I can also delete individual tasks from my list. I can hover over, click the three dots on the right side, and then choose delete. While I am in this menu, I also can move a task to another list. So let's say I want to move grade papers to my power list. I'm just gonna select power list and it will automatically move it over to that list. Now let's talk about how to access Google Tasks within the app. I'm going to open up the app store and I'm gonna search for Google Tasks. The icon looks the same as it does on the side panel. It's that blue circle with a check mark. I'm gonna go ahead and download that app to my phone. Once it has downloaded, I'm going to open the app. And just like on the side panel, I'm gonna see the message that says get started. I'm gonna click that. It's gonna ask if I want notifications. I can either choose allow or don't allow depending on my preferences. It's then gonna ask me to select what Google account I want to use this for. Since I'm using this as an example, I'm gonna select my joint account with my husband and it's going to open up my Google tasks. You will notice that it now has the same task that I saw on the side panel because it is connected through my Google account. Now there is also a Google Chrome extension that will allow you to view Google tasks full screen on your computer, but we'll come back to that later on in the video. Now let's cover how to use the Google tasks app. And just like before, I'm gonna break it down into the lists and the tasks. Let's start with the lists. You can create a new list two different ways. First, you can click the three horizontal lines in the bottom left corner, and then you can select create new list, or you can click the new list button up at the top next to the list you already have. Once you have clicked either of those options, you're going to give your list a name. So for example, future to do's, and then click the blue done button in the top right corner. It's going to prompt you to use the task widget if you do not already have that added, so you can just click got it. You can also edit an existing list. Just select the list that you want to edit. So for example, future to do's, click the three dots in the bottom right corner and select rename list. So maybe I want to call this future to do list. Instead, I can just change the name and then click done. You also can switch between lists just by clicking on the different lists up at the top, but you are not able to reorder the list through the app. You can only do that through the side panel on your computer. Now let's talk about the tasks. You can add a task to a list by first making sure you have the correct list selected at the top and then clicking the plus sign at the bottom. Just like on the side panel, you're going to give it a name. So let's say plan math lesson. If you want to add details, just click the horizontal lines you see on the left side and type in the details. And if you want to give it a specific date and time, click the little calendar icon and select that date and time. Once you are done, just click save. You can also edit a task at any time just by tapping on it. And then you can edit those details. So let's say I want to remove the date, I can click the X and then I'm going to just click the arrow at the top in order to go back and save it. I can also reorder the task by holding my thumb or finger down and dragging it into the order that I want. And I can add subtasks. I can just click on the task and then select add subtasks. So for example, I can create slides and I can make copies. Once you are done, just click that arrow at the top in order to go back. Just like on the side panel, I can check off and mark them as completed and they will move down to that completed section. I can expand the completed section or hide it. If I want to delete an individual completed task, I'm just gonna tap that little arrow, tap on the task, and then I can select the trash can icon in the top right, or I can actually delete all of the completed tasks at one time by selecting the three dots in the bottom right corner and then selecting delete all completed tasks. 
I can also delete a task that is still on my list by tapping the task and then selecting that trash can icon in the top right corner. And I can move an item to another list by selecting the item and then changing that drop down of the list name at the top and it will automatically move it to that list. Next, let's talk about using Google Tasks with your Google Calendar. Earlier on, I mentioned that you could add a date and time to a task. So on my side panel, I'm going to create a task. So let's add make appointment. And I can add a date and time by clicking, selecting the date, and then setting a time. So for example, 10 a.m. and clicking OK. You will notice because I also have my Google Calendar opened that that task automatically was added to my Google Calendar. You also can create a task directly through your Google Calendar. So you will notice Google Calendar automatically by default creates a calendar called tasks. It's right over here. I can show or hide it. If I want to create a task through Google Calendar, I'm gonna click the arrow next to create and I'm going to select task. It's going to open up a window that looks very similar to Google Tasks. So let's say make phone call. Once again, I can select that date and time. So I'm gonna select Thursday and let's do 11.30 a.m. Down at the bottom, I'm going to select the list. So maybe I want this on my weekly to-do list. I'm going to click save. It has added it to my Google Calendar, but if I go over here to Google Tasks and I go to my weekly to-do list, you will see it is listed there as well. Next, let's talk about extensions for Google Tasks. If you are using the Chrome browser, you have the option to add extensions. And there are extensions that will allow you to view Google Tasks in a full screen, so in a full tab, rather than just the side panel. So I'm gonna show you my personal favorite. Like I said, you do wanna make sure you are in Google Chrome and you want to go to the Chrome Web Store. My personal favorite is called Full Screen for Google Tasks, but I will link directly to this extension in the description box. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the extension and I'm gonna click the blue Add to Chrome button. It's going to ask if I want to add it. I'm gonna click Add Extension and it will take just a few seconds to add that on. You will notice I now have the icon up next to my extensions. It looks like a yellow circle with a little piece of chalk on it. So in order to open this in that full screen mode, I'm just going to select it and it's going to add a little tab over to the side and it's going to ask my language, I'm gonna select English, <laughs> and it's gonna ask me to sign into Google Tasks. I'm gonna click that button and select my account. It's going to ask for permission. I'm gonna check both boxes and select continue. Now you will notice it is connected to my Google Tasks, so all those same tasks are there, but I can view it in a full screen rather than just that sidebar. Now I'm gonna share some of my best tips for using Google Tasks in an efficient way. Tip number one is to use keyboard shortcuts. If I have Google Tasks opened in that side panel, I'm gonna click the three dots and I'm going to select keyboard shortcuts. This will actually show me all the keyboard shortcuts that are available. It is helpful to know some of these because it saves just a little bit of time. Tip number two is to create a to-do list system. Personally, I don't like having a very long to-do list because I find it overwhelming. So I like to have my power list, which is just three items to complete each day, a weekly to-do list of all the tasks I plan on completing that week, and then a future to-do list for those things that I remember I have to get done, but it's not a priority. I typically sit down on Sunday night and I generate all of those items I have to get done for the week on my weekly to-do list. And then at the start of each day or even the night before, I will choose three items from my weekly to-do list to move onto my power list so I have a focus for that day. That's one reason I love Google Tasks because it allows you to move tasks from one list to another very easily. Tip number three is to create recurring tasks. We all know there are those things that we do week after week after week, and rather than adding it to your to-do list every single week, you can have it auto-generate. So let's say I have to send an email every week. I'm gonna click on add a task, and I'm gonna title it schedule email. Then you will notice down here, there is a repeat button. It looks like two arrows. I'm gonna click on that. Then you will notice I need to select a date and time. So let's say I want this reminder every Wednesday. 
I can set a specific time if I want, or I can keep it broad and just have it assigned to that day. Then I can select repeat. It's gonna ask me how often I want it repeated. So I want it repeated every one week, and I can select the day I want it on Wednesdays, and I select the start. So I'm gonna have it start on February 23rd. Once again, I can set a time if I want to, and I'm going to click OK. This is going to automatically be added to my to-do list each week in order to save me time. Tip number four is to sort by date. If you add dates and times to all of your to-do list items, you can then sort the list by date. So it will put the next occurring item first and things that are later on down at the bottom. So it's a great way to help you prioritize your tasks. In order to sort by date, I'm going to make sure the correct list is selected and I'm gonna click the three dots and I'm going to choose sort by date. This is going to automatically reorder and it even tells me what day each item has to be done by. You could either assign the dates and times based on when you plan on completing it or when it's due, it's completely up to you. Tip number five is to add emojis to organize your to-dos. If you don't wanna add a specific date and time to your items, instead you could actually use emojis in order to sort them by the day of the week you plan on completing it or the task you're going to do first. I'm gonna switch over to my power list. Let's say I know that I want to grade papers first. I can click next to that task so that I can edit it. I'm gonna come up here to a emoji extension that I've added. I will link that for you as well. And maybe I want a star icon. So something like this. It has copied it and I now can paste it next to that to-do list item. So the next day, I know that that's the item I want to start with first. But you also could use colored dots in order to symbolize the days of the week. So maybe Monday is red, Tuesday is orange, Wednesday is yellow, and so on. And finally, tip number six, I know this one is pretty self-explanatory, but try to keep all of your to-do lists in one place. I've shared a lot of different apps and websites that can be used to create lists, such as the Notes app, Google Keep, but when it comes to your actual to-do list, those things that you need to get done, have them all in one location, such as Google Tasks. That way you're not searching for different lists and end up forgetting about some of them. I do have a video coming where I'm gonna explain the differences between Google Tasks, Google Keep, and the Notes app. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss it. But that is it. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you wanna see how I actually implement Google Tasks in my daily life, I do have a week in the life vlog where I show you. So I will link that for you in the description box along with the Google Tasks app and the Google Chrome extension. If this video was helpful for you, please give the video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.